Dr. Jay Shankar, from from honourable rivalries to to now very vicious personal attacks, would you say sledging, both in cricket and in politics, has become part of the par for the course? The personal attacks was the politics or the, the cricket? <laughs> uh, but anyway, I know the answer. Uh, now look. You know, if I could just pick up on something which Kevin said, uh, he spoke about sports, cricket specifically, as a way of bonding, of, of uh, uniting. Uh, uniting. I also look at it in a slightly different way. I mean, think of us. You know, we're from the world of sports, from the world of politics, from the world of diplomacy, and what is common amongst the three of us? All of them are extremely competitive activities. So the end of the day, you know, sports or politics or diplomacy are ways of taking your competitive spirit into a particular domain. Now, uh, when you speak about leadership, uh, leadership is about making choices, uh, having the courage to make the choices at difficult moments in the middle of a competition, and uh, you know, in in anything which any of us would have done, uh, a large part of it is drilling for it on a regular basis, the sort of, uh, the, uh, I would say, uh, the going to the nets which you would do in every business or as a regular routine, but also the mental strength and the experience and, the, uh, and sometimes the innate talent to take the tough calls uh, at the right time. Now, when you are competitive, uh, yes, sometimes competitive competition can be very extreme, and that's the kind of uh, you know uh, uh, situation you are talking about. It will happen because not everybody would play by the rules. Not everybody. Uh, sometimes it could be temperament. Uh, sometimes it could be the compulsions of a situation. Uh, it can happen. Uh, but I would say, uh, you know, in you know, in my in my own way of working, I, I think if I have colleagues in the room, they would bear me out. I often, uh, in uh, diplomacy or in strategizing, use uh, cricket analogies. You know, I would say I would take a particular match or a particular player and use that to get across to them that that's what I expect or that's what I think we should do or that's a kind of risk we should take uh, and. Uh, uh, to, you know, and in all of this, one has to plan for the fact that uh, there will always be sledging, there will always be uh, something beyond the rules, you know, something from the, as they say in another continent which doesn't play cricket, from the left field. Right. I, I want to quote from what uh, Mike Pompeo recently said about you in his book. He called you, and I'm quoting, a professional, rational, and a fierce defender of his boss and his country. And since you, um, believe in cricket analogies, with a, with a captain like Prime Minister Modi, how do you really set your field? Do you play an aggressive game and you know, close in on the batsmen or do you focus more on, on guarding the boundaries mostly? Well, I think with Prime Minister Modi, with Captain Modi, there's a lot of net practice. I mean, uh, there's, uh, yeah, there's, the net practice starts at 6 o'clock in the morning and goes on uh, till, till fairly late. Uh, but uh, again, you know, there's also and, and I'm sure Kevin would agree. I mean, if you have uh, a particular bowler who uh, you trust in or you've seen perform, you would give them the latitude. Uh, the you throw the ball to them at the right moment. You would trust them to to deal with that particular situation. And I think, uh, uh, in that sense, Captain Modi does give uh, his bowlers uh, a certain amount of. Uh, freedom. I mean, uh, he expects you to to take that wicket uh, if he gives you the chance to do it. But uh, I would also say some of it is uh, watching the difficult decisions being taken. You know, Kevin was speaking about the pandemic. I mean, uh, all of us, if we look back at the last uh, three years, you know, the decision to lock down was a very, very tough decision. But it had to be taken at that point of time, and if we now look back, what would have happened if we had not taken that decision? The decision to, uh, to actually uh, push the uh, vaccines in the manner, the vaccine production 
in the manner in which it was done. Because, you know, uh, uh, I, it's, it's something which most people naturally wouldn't know. One of the reasons why Tony and I have been so closely in touch was through the pandemic we were working uh, the, the raw materials uh, flow uh, for the uh, for the uh, AstraZeneca, for the Covishield vaccine. Uh, so, uh, you know, to, to have the confidence to, uh, to be able to ha devise a program to vaccinate so much people. Or even, I would say, the call uh, to uh, send vaccines abroad. There was a lot of questioning of that. I mean, today, everybody says, yes, great idea, you know, we gave vaccines to 100 countries. And it was a tough call because at that time, remember. So to me, a lot of, whether it's sports, any, any competitive situation, is that willingness to take the difficult calls, stand by those calls, uh, give your people the confidence that you will stand by them when they take the risks. This is all about competition and leadership. Mm. Mr. Blair, I want to talk 